our new show, which is coming to you live with uh, my co-host, uh, Joy Williams, and also Lori Ford. And we're here to give hope and have some lively discussions. We'll be discussing many topics, and we hope that we can give hope to those that have lost hope in things that should still be in place. Uh, you want to say hello to everyone? Hello. hello guys welcome to hope uplifting discussion hello we hope you find it engaging and um, that you tell others well we have in the past been discussing uh, some of the things that have turned people off about coming to ch organized churches uh, and uh, a lot of things that affect our society and of course we are all from a Christian background Christian church I, being the time of Bishop Bright that means I'm involved in the church and we're just trying to draw people back to unite and to fellowship together. Many of the reasons that people don't come to church has, you know, been a, a lot of myths and uh, some hurts and disappointments. And so uh, we're going to talk about some things that will bring hope to building a church. Uh, it's not so strenuous, it's not so uh, mythical, uh, but it's being in, empowering people uh, to live in this life and expecting to live in the other life. Uh, any comments? Um, so, <laughs> I, I feel like I've heard several reasons as to why people do not come to church. Right. Um, one of the main reasons that I hear, especially from people who are my age, I hear a lot of people feel like it's, it's hypocritical and that a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people within the church are judgmental and they don't feel like, especially when you're not perfect, because none of us are, right. and they may come into the church because, because they're not perfect and they feel like they need God's help and they need Jesus in their life, and then they get there and they may not be welcome as they are, and so I guess the question is, how do we get those people who feel that way to come back and want to keep coming back despite those issues. Right. Right. Okay. Lori? <laughs> uh, well, another reason I think that or that people don't come is I think there's a mentality that your life has to be really bad to, to, to come to church. Right. Like if things are well, if things are good, you know, if you're having success, then why do I need to come to church? Well, I think when people come to church, they're looking for some uh, companionship or looking for someone that can touch them. Uh, because the other thing that I hear is technology has made it so convenient that you don't really have to right. go to church. You can just turn on the television or turn on the radio and you can hear basically the same thing. But there's nothing like being touched uh, not, and having a, a friend because the people uh, on television, they don't see you or they can't feel you uh, the way you can when you're working together. Uh, and I think this true friendship comes from that as well. But I think somehow we've made, uh, uh, with religions and denominations, we've made it very difficult for people to, to overcome those barriers that you both just mentioned. And so uh, I think we need to work on uh, our people uh, issues, you know, and, and how to solve problems and work with people and recognize that, you know, as the scriptures say once, go their eye. You know, so we have to remember that we, we're we not perfect now, that uh, we're a long way from where we were, but got a long way to go to be what we should be. All right? Okay. Yeah. Um, we, I feel like we also need to get back to, you know, the community aspect of church. And, like, I, I've been in church pretty much my whole life, so... There were, uh, most Sundays we would be at church from sun up until sundown and we would just be there and just fellowshipping with each other and just, you know, it was more of a family aspect and we all felt really connected to each other. And so I think that that should also be one of our other focuses is to be more unified and to create that, that family feeling so that when people do come and we get new members in the church that they feel like they feel that they're a part of a family and that I feel like that'll be something that will also help people to continue to come back to the church and stay longer. I mean, because we get 
I see churches get new visitors all the time. People say they try this church, they try mm -hmm. that church, That's but right. then it doesn't stick. Right. So a lot of the focus is to make sure that it sticks and that people keep coming back week after week. Right. Uh, because they feel a part of it rather than mm -hmm. uh, under something. Right. But, but though it's, it's interesting that you say, because I grew up where we stayed in church all day, you know, mm -hmm. I went to church for Sunday school in the morning, and we got back home time to go to bed on Sundays. <laughs> And then we had midweek services, and we had all of these things. And one of the things that in, in the research that I've done is because even though we gathered that, that often, we really were not feeding the people with how to deal with this life. We were always trying to make them more heavenly minded than, than earthly uh, good. So I think that's the issue as you bring up. Yeah, I think that's a good one. <coughs> me. I, th I think there's a real issue. I mean, people need people. Mm -hmm. You know, and even though we say we don't, right. uh, we need we need people. Right. Do you feel like Do you feel like how you said that you were at church several days a week? Do you think that nowadays we're too busy? Do you think that everybody everybody has their blinders on and they're kind of living their own lives? Do you feel like people are at times they feel like they're too busy with their own lives to go and support something that's happening at their church or at the local church? Uh, I kind of think so. I, I really like to say things have become more convenient or available than they were in our time. There was nothing else to do. So we did everything at church. Uh, you know, we, we had gathered with people we were comfortable with, uh, people who believed like us, uh, you know. Uh, and if you go way back in history, uh, the church in the African American community was the only place we could gather and you know have our own conversation to to talk about the things that we had in common and so uh, it was the courthouse it was the the the, the counselors it was uh you know everything that we we needed to live and now we we have other avenues to travel we have more money you know we didn't have uh medical insurance so we relied on faith and prayer uh, uh, we, we, you know, people thought we were weird, so we stayed with people who didn't think we were. So I think, I think that that we became our own, if I might use this worst enemy, because we didn't see it changing. We didn't, we didn't change with the, the world. Our, our young people started leaving the church, and and we didn't understand why. Because you know, we were always raised that this is the only place to be. You know. Do you feel like the church? Um, teaches us or equips us on how to live better? Uh, if you're saying live better, I, are you saying live in this, in this life? Live in this life. Live a fuller, complete life. Because I feel like, I mean, people chase after a lot of things in yes. hopes of being fulfilled. Yes. And but not necessarily um, really touching the issues of why they're chasing after things in the first place. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, yeah, I think so, but I think what happened is that we, uh, we, we were ignorant on a lot of things and we kept passing the ignorance on to other people. And I think we can pursue this right after we take this break and we'll be right back. Simply Gents, located in Marlton, New Jersey, takes care of all your grooming needs, including haircuts, straight razor shaves, massages, facials, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. To find more information or book an appointment, visit us online at www.simplygents.com. The secret weapon of a well-groomed man, Simply Gents. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. 
comes to our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Today's show was brought to you by Alicia Kelly of Whitehorse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Alicia is your RV expert. Contact Alicia at alicia at whitehorserv.com or give her a call at 856-262-1717, extension 203. When you think of RV, think Alicia Kelly. Extra Innings is the nation's premier indoor baseball and softball training center featuring indoor batting cages, seven multi-use tunnels, and training rooms. Extra Innings can provide professional instruction, private and group lessons, and the best year-round clinics. Along with a nationally recognized pro shop that features the latest and widest selection of equipment and apparel, our experienced staff can provide you with the right instruction and help you find the best equipment for your ability and budget. Extra Innings, where the game never ends. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Well, welcome back to our show, Hope Uplifting Discussions. And I'm here today. I'm Bishop Herbert Bright. I'm here today with my co host, Joy Williams and Lori Ford. And uh, we are just discussing things that could make life better for us and also make sure that we have uh, a religious or, and I shouldn't say, a spiritual growth. And just before the commercial break, uh, Lori had asked a question about. Are we equipping people, uh, and, and, and am I saying this right, mm -hmm. equipping people to live in this life mm -hmm. or, or today? And uh, I, I, think, I think that we, we have missed that, missed that. I think that in the old churches that uh, we were more focused on uh, being religious, uh, having, uh, you know, they used to sing a song, uh, give it a old time mm -hmm. religion, and, and it was all, so we separated church from natural life. And again, it came back to the communities we were raised in. Uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, people, successful people, that we saw. There was, uh, if you ask somebody about being a designer, they didn't really know what you were talking about. Or designers really, they only thought of it being for dressing up or something like that. So there was no one there to teach you how to live here. There was no career planning. There was no financial planning. There was no uh, things that are essential to life today. So I guess my quick, my, my response is no. I think that's what churches are doing today. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are doing that are really heavily criticized by the religious movement because they, they just want to remain in the Bible. And not knowing that we are, everything is biblically centered right. and it's theocentric. But we, we have to know that, that we're in this world, but not of the world. Jesus said he'd leave us in this world, so we do the thing. But we don't conform to this world. But that doesn't mean that we can't be lawyers or accountants or judges or, or things like that. You know, uh, they took scriptures out of ignorance, like judge not, and then they kept us out of the law field. Uh, you know, different things like that. Uh, they said people lie, they, but they didn't know. They, they just, going by what they heard, they were passing on myths. So I think that that is the focus of a generation today, is to, in order to, uh, uh, I guess, grow the church back to where it was, we have to keep in mind that we have all types of people in the church now. You know, it's interesting on the day of Pentecost that, that while we excluded it here from Azusa Street, we, we kind of dealt with people not having business, I'm talking about in particular churches, uh, but in, in, on the day of Pentecost, the day after, it was business people that the disciples went out to minister to. 
They were there in, uh, on business for business. They were not there for a church or anything else. And so they came together and communed together. So they, all, when they, I think, my opinion is, when they shared everything in common, is that they realized what differences they had and then put them together to become one community. I mean, just to expound on that point, when it comes to whether church equips us to live everyday life, I, I think like you said previously in the past, churches may have focused more so on just the religious aspect, but I do think that current, present day, we're evolving into a place that does focus on, I mean, I know that at our church we've had like financial seminars before because I mean these are things that we deal with on an everyday basis so to learn how to properly deal with your finances and to properly like different aspects of life how to deal with anger and how to manage your anger how to effectively communicate with your spouse these are things that the Bible equips us with the answers to right. and these are things that present day we do focus on in church and it helps us on an everyday basis right. on how to live like I said how to deal with your anger how to deal with your finances how to communicate more effectively so things like that I think that's where the evolution is coming into play where we're taking the Bible and we're applying it to our everyday life right, right. And, and, and I think that's very good because it, it, you know it's, we have you know, counseling, we have wedding uh, retreats, we have women's retreats to deal with women's issues, we have men's retreats, and I think in the whole church, uh, the pastor was the uh, wherewithal, you know, if he understood it, or she understood it, and mostly he back in those days, uh, mm -hmm. whatever they understood, that's what they taught you, so to even discuss a financial program, we didn't have the money to discuss, there was no need. Discussion, you know, you took the mason jar and emptied out the pennies or whatever you did. And so uh, as we started moving in, it became what the church looked at as worldly, not understanding what worldly meant. Because it was not something that we, uh, I guess, we did, you know. And so we kind of hindered the growth. You know, I'm, I'm a product of that. You know, every time you wanted to be something, they would tell you about how that would counter your salvation. So, so instead of encouraging people to go after careers, uh, if someone did, then they were really an outcast of the church. Uh, college degrees was out, anything, you know, that, that was back in the day. So that's not every church, but that's a lot of churches. Uh, the most educated people were usually the, the leaders of the church. So now it's, then we got a, most all of the, all the, uh, the, the members are educated, so uh, we should be pushing that. So how do, so how do we get past the stereotypes that we have in church that other people may see or think about the church like how do we get past those previous thoughts or those previous hurts that may have people wary about coming back to the church how do we move past that how do we how do we get people to come back to the church how do we get to that place that's a good question. <laughs> so I'm going to let Sister Lori give, her, <laughs> give what, us an answer what do you to think? that. What do you think? Well, um, I think um, one of the things like we were talking about is we definitely need to be uh, more community conscious and um, offering things that, you know, are of concern to the community as um, Bishop Wright was talking about, you know, education, all those kinds of things and financial seminars the bible has a lot to say about finances yes oh yes you know the bible has a lot to say about health right. you know and these are pressing things that you know people battle with they struggle with and i i feel like you know if we um reach out you know from a biblical standpoint and to, um for people to come and learn that that would draw people um the church because like, like like you said the church didn't offer anything like that before right, right. <laughs> and, and it was not there i think yeah. i think the church really needs and i know religious folks will, won't believe this because they just want you to believe in god but i think we need a lot of public relations i think a lot of people mm -hmm. that left the church uh, because of these same issues 
they don't think it exists in our churches anymore. They don't uh, believe that we think that outside of the box, if you will, or the box of, of uh, being saved and sanctified, you know, and all of those things. But uh, we, we, we need to realize we need our own. We, we, we need to make ourselves a community. And you can't do it without having these other types of skills right. operating in them in the church. And so we need to be able to uh, let people know we're not the same. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that we, we still promote Christ, we still promote, you know, salvation, but we also realize that we need to be in this world and we need to be the leaders of this world. And mm -hmm. we're going to be right back right after this break and we're going to continue on with this discussion. In Marlton, New Jersey, takes care of all your grooming needs, including haircuts, great razor shaves, massages, facial, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. To find more information or book an appointment, visit us online at www.simplygents.com. The secret weapon of a well-groomed man, Simply Gents. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Martha, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Today's show was brought to you by Alicia Kelly of Whitehorse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Alicia is your RV expert. Contact Alicia at alicia at whitehorserv.com or give her a call at 856-262-1717, extension 203. When you think of RV, think Alicia Kelly. Extra Innings is the nation's premier indoor baseball and softball training center featuring indoor batting cages, seven multi-use tunnels, and training rooms. Extra Innings can provide professional instruction, private and group lessons, and the best year-round clinics. Along with a nationally recognized pro shop that features the latest and widest selection of equipment and apparel, our experienced staff can provide you with the right instruction and help you find the best equipment for your ability and budget. Extra Innings, where the game never ends. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Well, welcome back to our sh television show, Hope, Lively Discussions, and I'm Bishop Herbert Bright. I'm here with my co-host, Joy Williams and Lori Ford, and we're talking about many things that's uh, uh, kind of been missing out of church, which is evolving back into the church. Uh, we're, we're, we are not excluding the Lord from the church, but we are finding ways that we can include him uh, and seek him in all our ways so we can be successful in this world and be ready for the world to come. So we've had some lively discussions here and I'm just uh, anything else that we want to... Um, well, uh, <laughs> before, the, before the break we were kind of talking about how how we can get people to okay. to come back to church and how we can get people to kind of get rid of that 
this stain that's in their mind about what they may have heard about church in the past or previous previous hurts that they may have had from their experiences at church before and I think that a big key to that is to show that we're human as well we're not in church because we're perfect we're in church because we need Jesus and we're we're there because we're not perfect and so we need to get back to showing people that we're human as well and that we're this is a walk and it's ups and downs there's going to be high points there's going to be low points and that is what your walk with Jesus Christ is going to be like you're going to have up moments you're going to have down moments and it's not going to be perfect and church isn't just for when you're down it's for when you're up as well so I think that it's important to as well as show people that we incorporate things that are in our everyday lives we also need to continue to show them that we're human and that we're all on this walk together and that come back because this is a community and we're all trying to get through this this life together amen 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 i i, I agree with that and uh, uh the, the other thing is i think from the minister standpoint we need to make sure that our messages are relevant the bible will never change but there are changes in the bible that impact our lives today and we're not living in the days of uh, the, the Jonas and, and the things but they, their stories gives us hope and gives us direction so we, we we learn about what happened to them in those days but we don't try to be them in this day so uh, Lori do you have any closing comments you'd like to have? Well also I think what we alluded, alluded to earlier is is continuing to create that sense of community you know that sense of family um just thinking about you know when when i was growing up and it's like we had a, a youth center mm -hmm. and you know that old thing that everybody knew everybody you know parents and knew where you were and you know we were all together right. you know we traveled together we did stuff together right. so you know um creating that community um within the church so yeah. people like people want, they can't wait to get there right. it's my family right. 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 <laughs> But you brought up something very interesting because one of the things we are, are lacking in is reaching the youth uh, uh, for more than just entertainment, you know, or, or sports yeah. events. Yeah. Uh, even though sometimes in the church we get them in our churches, but they're still basketball players, yeah. uh, musicians, or uh, you know stuff. But we need we want to instill Christ in them and still allow them to be what God's yeah. given them a talent to be uh, at the same time. But at the same time, as you said, a community where we, we are doing things together and we're responsible for each other. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's, that's interesting. I think that's something we can talk yeah. about uh, because uh, our youth are not lost. Our, loss is our right. youth is just neglected at this time because we try to make them be what we would like to be or what we uh, think they should be rather than what God created them to be. Right, and I mean, we, and like we've been talking about kind of this whole entire episode is unconventional methods right. of right. reaching the youth because the thing is is that like triumphant life community church i literally like i posted a picture not too long ago of we're on the steps and i'm yay high and i used to love like when i was a child i loved coming to church like it was it was fun to me it was a community it was mm -hmm. like it was fun and i and i think that we need to find new methods to reach the youth and make it fun for them and make it something that they want to do as opposed to oh my mom is dragging me to church again right. like so creating those unconventional methods Thinking I think outside the box. yeah it's important it's definitely well, I, important. I think not only for the youth and as we've alluded to in this conversation is that we need to make this available to everyone mm -hmm. so that they'll have be excited about being there uh, it's not taken away from who they are but it's adding something to their lives and so uh, we plan in the future to have even guests to come on and discuss, you know, some of the issues that they have a concern about, about bringing hope to our community. Uh, all we hear on the news is the doom and gloom and that we're about to go down, but there is hope. And so we just thank everybody for joining us. And uh, we want you to uh, just, just tune in to us and we'll be just having dialogue. We're just really talking about uh, things that are real in our lives. 
And not only we're not putting anyone down or trying to exalt ourselves, but we're just talking about the things that are concerned, and I think it helps build the kingdom. We're here to build the kingdom, and in every kingdom, as we spoke about a few weeks ago, there's many, many types of vessels. So you don't have to be perfect to be in, in, in the house, in the great house. You, you just, just need to be in the great house. God can use you with whatever gifts you have and whatever talents you have. And we're just giving them to the kingdom. All right. So again, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us here on Radio Vision Network. Uh, thank you so much to having us on and allowing us to air this show. And again, thank you, Joy. Did you yeah, want to close with us? <laughs> Um, no, we will see you. We will see you next time. It was a great discussion, and we're looking forward to the next one. And we have hope that you'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is Bishop Bright. See you next time.